So here we're talking about human law comparison. What we're doing here is we're talking about comparing God's laws with human laws and seeing what the results are. That's our purpose of this discussion. So what's the reasons for doing this? Well, firstly, my personal pain is that since I've, from my childhood onwards, I've been exposed to parental law or caregiver law, I suppose you could call it. And, and then, of course, as I've grown into an adult, I'm now exposed to societal law. And the problem is both caregiver law or parent law and societal law have their issues, have a lot of problems. Most parents are very inconsistent with the way in which they apply law to their children. And then when the child grows up to be an adult, the, the parent doesn't have to bear the consequence of their inconsistency. Society does. And so then society created a whole heap of laws to actually circumnavigate the fact that parents didn't do their job right and it created a whole heap of children who are now adults who bought and break the law. <laughs> and so, so we end up with this problem where we have a pain inside of us. It's a pain in the sense that it causes our pain and suffering as well. But this pain is created by, since this childhood, I've been exposed to parents who uh, have no idea or clueless about law. And then as a result, when the parents get rid of the child, the child is now foisted onto society and now society has to create, create a whole of your laws to deal with the unruly children that are now adults. And this is a part of my pain that exists with inside of me. So I've developed, as a result of that, attitudes towards law, whether it's God's law or human's law, there's attitudes now inside of me that are out of harmony with love, that come from my childhood experience, but that are imposed upon human and God's laws. Right? And this is why the majority of you, when we talk about law or we raise the issue of law, your first, uh, usually your first inclination is to rebel. Right? And it's because of these pro problems that come from childhood. Now, I have attitudes to God's law which cause me much heartache and pain. So what happens is I think that God's laws should be much the same as what parents and society's laws were in that I could ignore most of them and uh, disobey a lot of them and get away with it. And so then I try doing that with God's laws. Right? And it doesn't work. And instead I get a lot of pain and suffering as a result of that. Right? And so this is a source of the majority of our pain and suffering is the fact that we choose to disobey God's laws and we have been predisposed to do so because of the parental and societal inconsistencies that are now in, in, inside of me as belief systems that exist. So this is a big issue for us. We need to make a comparison to start highlighting some of the areas where society and parental law is very very different to God's laws so that we can examine and later compare and make the comparison to see what kind of hangover we have from our parental our childhood upbringing and also from our living in the society the way it's currently configured and this if we are honest in this examination we have we, we will have exposed to us many of our unhealed, unloving emotions that we will need to work our way through in order to correct the problem. And this is why an honest examination and particularly an honest self-examination of this particular subject is very important. So what we first do is we want to compare these things and, and then also throughout the comparison what I'd like to do is ha have with you some honest self-examination of these particular issues so that uh, we can identify where the problems lay and we can start then to address what kind of emotions may be driving our underlying problems. Yep. So I need to examine the attitude to God's laws if I want to become happy. This is a primary thing we need to remember. If, I, if my attitude remains the same as it currently is towards God's laws, then it's highly likely that I'm going to continue sinning. And this is what I've noticed for many of you last who have known me for years and years now. You continue sinning in the same way because you think it doesn't matter. 
and hopefully you're getting already from our discussion about law that from God's perspective, it matters. Right? And therefore, much of our pain and suffering comes from our attitude that it doesn't matter. And that needs to be addressed. Okay, some other reasons. If I compare God's laws with human law, I have a chance to identify the injuries. So, so this is why it's wise to go through this discussion with you. And there will be a series of three things that we're going to analyse here in this discussion. And this is the first one of them. So the first thing is comparing the human law with God's laws. The second thing is examining our attitudes inside of us emotionally. And we'll be doing that on day, I think it's day four. We'll examine the attitudes. And also on day four, we'll look at what the subsequent result of that analysis means in terms of how we're hung over and how we impose these hangover beliefs upon God's laws. So we basically, this is the first part of a three-part discussion about this subject. Does that make sense? So God's law, these emotional injuries prevent me from obeying God's laws. They prevent me from being happy and they prevent, or, or sorry, cause pain for myself and others, which, is, which are all big problems, right? Those three things, big problems. And we need, to, we need to have this discussion so that we can begin the process of correcting this problem. Yep. Now, remember, this, this whole series is all about getting an education in love. Now, if you're going to become loving, you're going to have to become what God defines as loving. Now, what God defines as loving, as we've already established in this discussion over the last two days, is that God's personality and nature, and therefore what God defines as loving is imposed upon God's principles. So all the principles we're discussing, and there are many more, remember, but all the principles we are discussing have a facet of love in them and a facet of truth in them. And so anywhere where we are disharmonious with these principles automatically means that we're not just sinning against one law. We're sinning against probably close to every law as soon as we are disharmonious with one of these principles. Does that make sense? And we need to start seeing that this is the case. Now, why do we need to do that? Well, our next discussion is all about sin. For you to know how you are sinning, you've got to know where the law is. For you to know where the law is, you need to know the principle that governs the law. So this is why we're having this discussion of the principles governing the laws so that we can ident identify the sin and therefore correct it. Now remember, sin is our creation. And the reason why we create it is because of this problem. We have some law-based issues that we need to address. And if we don't address them, it is highly unlikely we were go are going to be able to establish or maintain a relationship with God and therefore establish or maintain any education regarding what love is and how God intended the universe to be. So you can see the importance of the discussion, right? Yep. So let's get started. 